The Quiz Kids, brought to you by the makers of Alka-Seltzer. Alka-Seltzer for headaches. Alka-Seltzer for acid indigestion. Alka-Seltzer for cold discomfort. Yes, when these occasional ailments make you miserable, try Alka-Seltzer for really fast, really effective relief. Attention, Quiz Kids. Since this is Easter Sunday, we've arranged a big surprise for you. Who do you suppose is going to ask our first question this afternoon? Why, none other than Mr. Easter Bunny himself in person. That's right, folks, and are we ever excited. Why, well, we can hardly wait till he gets here. Well, let's call the class to order in a hurry and be all ready for him. And now here they are, the Quiz Kids and their genial Quiz Master, Joe Kelly. <laughs> Thank you, Bob Murphy, and a happy Easter to everyone. Well, this certainly is a special occasion. Imagine having the Easter Bunny right here in our classroom. I wonder how many of you have ever had a real good look at him. Well, he's something to see, I can tell you. I caught a glimpse of him early this morning when he was in here arranging those beautiful Easter baskets there on your desk. And we we don't want to keep Mr. Easter Bunny waiting, so let's get roll call over with right now. Joel? I'm Joel Copperman. I'm 11 years old, in the departmental in the Volta School. Richard? I'm Richard Cravens. I'm 15 years old, and I'm in 10th grade at George Rogers Clark High School in Hammond, Indiana. Lonnie? I'm Lonnie Lundy. I'm 12 years old, in the 7th grade at Lincoln School in Park Ridge, Illinois. David? I'm David Freifelder. I'm 12 years old, in the 8th grade at West School in Waukegan, Illinois. And Patrick? I'm Pat Tomlin. I'm 10 years old, and in 6th grade at Fort Dearborn School in Chicago. All right, now, kids, we're ready to hear that first question, and here is the Easter Bunny to ask it. (laughs) Welcome to our classroom, Mr. Easter Bunny. We know you're a very busy man at this season of the year, and we certainly appreciate your coming here. Well, 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 I can hardly believe it. The little Easter Bunny right here in our classroom. He's all white with long pink ears and a little fluffy tail. And he's been hopping all around here. And he finally hopped up to the microphone. Are you all ready, Easter Bunny, to ask your question? Yes, I am, Mr. Kelly. Well, all right. Go right ahead. Now, listen. Go ahead. How do you know? That's eating carrots. Carrots help your eyes. Well, now, there you are. There's the doozer. How do you know that eating carrots helps your eyes? Richard? Well, carrots uh, contain vitamin A, and vitamin A is supposed to help your eyesight. Well, I uh, can we accept that as an answer, Mr. Easter Bunny? No, Mr. Kelly. No, no. All right. Oh, well, wait a minute, Mr. We got no. You got me talking that way now. I got uh, another hand up here, Joel. Well, the, the, don't they have some sort of test that they take so many people that eat cats and so many people that don't, and uh, they start them off uh, eating cats, some and eat not the others eating not, not eating cats, and at the end of a certain time, one group I uh, said is better than the other group. Uh, well, uh, it seems to me like you're making a, a very tough question out of this, Richard. Well, carrots, uh, as I said before, contain vitamin A, and without vitamin A, you get night blindness. And by eating carrots, you get your uh, requirements, and thus it helps your eyesight in preventing this disease of the eye. Well, uh, no, I'll tell you, I, I think we'd better have the Easter Bunny tell us the answer to how do you know that eating carrots helps your eyes? All right, Easter Bunny. You've never seen one of us bunnies wearing glasses, have you? <laughs> oh, that was a Oh, well, the Easter Bunny certainly got you on that one. Now then, I have a question I'd like to ask you, Quiz Kids. Can you identify this particular Easter Bunny that we have with us today? Uh, Patrick? Well, that's Richard White for the Riddler. <laughs> you think it is? Yes. Well, well, we'll just have to see whether you're right or not. Uh, uh, Easter Bunny, will you take off your mask and show us who you are? 
Overland <laughs> takes a lie. That's just who it is. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sir. None other than seven year old quiz kid Richard Weisler. Richard, how did Pat ever guess you after the way you changed your voice, sir? You know, I can hardly remember how you really sound. I'll tell you what, wish everyone a happy Easter just the way you normally talk, will you? All right. Happy Easter, everyone. Yeah, there you are. Now then, uh, let me hear that Easter bunny's voice again. Say the same thing in the Easter bunny's voice. How do you know? No, no, I don't. No, no, I don't. <laughs> I don't mean that. I mean, say happy Easter, everyone. Happy Easter, everyone. Happy Easter. <laughs> Just like a rabbit. Yeah, it would say happy Easter. Well, you certainly fooled me. I don't know how they ever guessed you. Well, thank you very much, Easter Bunny Richard. And thank you for all the Easter baskets, too. <laughs> that was cute. Here we go with more questions. Uh, Mrs. Ida C. Tarrant of Washington, D.C. asks, if you bought a pipe for an Easter present for these people, what kind of a pipe might seem appropriate? Uh, first, for the man who said, I had rather be right than president. Patrick. Uh, Henry Clay pipe. There was a Henry Clay in the clay pipe. That's right, the clay pipe. Henry Clay said that. And uh, how about buying a pipe for the Georgia peach? Go. Uh, well, that's Ty Cobb. I don't Ty Cobb? Oh, so, what kind of a pipe would you buy, Ty Cobb? Oh, Cobb pipe. Cobb pipe, that's right. Yes, a corn cob pipe. Well, that's absolutely right, kid. And for sending us that question, Alka Seltzer sends Mrs. Ida C. Terran of Washington, D.C., a fine Easter present. A Zenith Transoceanic Portable Radio. That's always the reward when the quiz kids answer your question correctly. If they miss, you get a magnificent $250 Zenith Radio Phonograph combination. So, friends, send those questions in. Just send them to Quiz Kids Chicago. Now, this next question is from John N. Lewis of Denver, Colorado. And he wants you to write a poem on the subject, My Mother's Easter Bonnet. And Easter Bunny Richard, you can help me out by passing out pencils and paper to the Quiz Kids so they can get busy on their poems right away while we go along with the questions. Now, remember, kids, the subject is My Mother's Easter Bonnet. And you must write that while we're answering questions. Here's a Bible question that's most appropriate for this Easter season. Angela Townsend of Watsonville, California, reminds us that the Lord Jesus Christ uttered some of the greatest and most profound truths of his gospel when he spoke in private conversations with individuals. With whom was Jesus speaking when he said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Patrick? Well, that was, he was talking with Nicodemus the Pharisee then. That's right, Nicodemus. Uh Uh-huh. To whom did Jesus say, Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed? Patrick? Well, he said that to Nicodemus too. No, I'm sorry. Uh Uh-huh. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. Lonnie? I think that was to Thomas. Thomas, that's right. To Thomas. Now, here's an interesting opera question from Sharon Neal of San Diego, California. Our artist Howard Peterson will play part of an opera area which should suggest the name of another opera. Now, first, listen to this uh, number one aria. <laughs> Bonnie? That's the London Bridal Chorus, or the Wedding March. Yes, so? Well, uh, wedding, that could be Tristan and Isolde, or any other opera about lovers. Well, uh, we're, we're uh, referring, we, uh, we say, what, what uh, uh, opera, what name yes, of Lord. another opera does that suggest, Bonnie? Yeah, well, that's the name Romeo and Juliet, or yeah. Tristan and Isolde, or <laughs> anything with, uh, like wedding suggests love, and those operas. Well, can you think of another opera that pertains to a wedding in its title? Uh, well, there's a... Richard? The Bartered Bride. The Bartered yeah. Bride. That's the idea. Uh-huh. And, uh, David? Marriage of Figaro. Marriage of Figaro, yes. Uh-huh. And uh, what were you going to say, Patrick? I was going to say the Marriage of Figaro, too. That's what I said. Uh, all right, fine. Well, let's see if we can get this next one. <laughs> Patrick? Well, that's the last rose of summer, and I, um, oh, let's see, I can't think of uh, one that has, uh, rose of summer in it. You can't? Lonnie? Well, that's, um, it could be the title of the opera that would be the clue, because it could be, uh, 
you've sung the opera Martha. That's right. And we're, we're trying to think of another opera that has, uh, say, maybe Rose in its title. David. The Rose and Cavalier. <laughs> that's, yes, that's right. Ah, uh-huh. well, so far this afternoon, our class has been right on the toes. You know, friends, even the subjects to be discussed are a top drawer secret until class is called to order, so our program is entirely unrehearsed. Yes, that's right, Joe. And uh, before you continue with the question session, I'd like to pose a little problem. Suppose a headache comes along suddenly and threatens to slow you down on the job or spoil an evening of fun. What do you do? Do you just suffer along, or are you one of the thousands who has learned about Alka-Seltzer and the fast relief it can offer for headache discomfort? Well, if you don't know, you should, friends. It's so easy to drop an Alka-Seltzer tablet or two into a glass of water, listen to it fizz, and then drink that sparkling effervescent solution. And the fast, effective relief Alka-Seltzer can bring is so welcome. Honestly, we think you'll be amazed how soon that occasional headache can become a forgotten interlude with Alka-Seltzer on the job. So try it next time you have a headache and see if you don't agree with the thousands who say there's nothing quite like Alka-Seltzer for fast, effective relief. You know, kids, last week we had an awful time with a simple math problem, (laughs) and we left the train floundering through the country an hour late. It never did reach its destination. Today, Howard Thomas of Seattle, Washington, wants us to try to get that poor train back on schedule. If it were traveling 55 miles an hour for the 20 hours it took to lose an hour, how fast would it have to travel to pick up the hour in the next 20 hours? Joel? Well, now, if it was trans... Now, if it lost the hour, if that means it's on a schedule... It should have done the distance in 19 hours, and the distance is 55 times 20, or 11, 55 times 20, so the scheduled speed would be 55 times 20 over 19. 55 times 20 over 19, that's not what you want in the question. All right. And, and, now let's see, if it gained an hour in the next 20 hours, that means that its regular speed would be 21 miles per hour. I mean, uh, yeah, it, its regular time would be 21 hours. So, let's see, it would be 21 times 50, t- 50, 21 times 55 times 20 over 19 would be the distance over... Uh, 20 would give the required speed. So the answer would be 55 times 20 times 21 over 20 times 19. Canceling out the 20s, it would be 55 times 21 over 19. And 21 19 is 1 and 2 19. So it would be 55 plus 2 19 times 55 or 110 19 or... Five and fifty nineteen. Uh, so the answer would be sixty and fifty nineteen miles per hour. That's absolutely right. <laughs> Believe me, that that was a lot tougher than last Sunday too. By the way. <laughs> Well, this uh, Easter question is from R.J. Schmidt of Moline, Illinois. Each of the following is a clue to something we associate with Easter. Let's see if you can identify them. First, an opera singer's name. Joel? Isn't that a prima donna? Well, no, we're, we're calling for an opera singer's name. Patrick? Louis Pond. Lily Pond. That's right. And uh, uh, next, the nickname of Joe Medwick. Former National League outfielder, Lonnie. That's the Ducky Medwick. Ducky. Duck. That's right, Duck. Uh-huh. All right, now, Mrs. Marilyn Collins of Maplewood, New Jersey, wants you kids to whip up a quick picnic lunch. I'll go down the line, and each of you must think of two things you might bring. One must begin with your first initial. The other must begin with your last initial. So we'll start with uh, Richard uh, Cravens. All right, Richard. Well, for my last initial, you could bring candy. Candy. And uh, First initial. 
First, initially, you might not bring food, but if you want to bring a hammock along the rest, you could take our for rope. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, we're, we're whipping up a picnic lunch, and we're, we're hungry, but not hungry enough to eat rope. Uh, no. Uh, can't you think of something else that's just... Uh, Ring pretzels, pretzels that are in ring, ring, ring pretzels. I oh, ring pretzels. Well, all right, I'm going to accept that because we, we all like pretzels anyway. And uh, next now is uh, Lonnie, Lonnie well, Lundy. Well, first of all, I want to bring lunch. Oh, yes, yeah, that's the main thing. And uh, I guess you could uh, a tablecloth or something, maybe it could be made of linen. Ah, uh, linen. Yeah, you have to have uh, lunch cloth put on the ground. All right, uh, Patrick. Well, you we might bring potato chips and uh, cake. <laughs> That's a fine combination, too. Um, <laughs> Joel? Well, you might uh, bring uh, uh, jelly or jam, and for the K, either you could bring cookies or cakes spelled with the K. <laughs> no, 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 I don't <laughs> spell cookies and cakes that way. I'm going to a king with too much king and make it uh, king a chicken. <laughs> well... I was uh, I was thinking of ketchup. No, that wouldn't work out either. <laughs> All right, David. Well, uh, for F, you could take uh, frankfurters or hot dogs. Yes. And for G, you could bring dishes or drinks. Well, fine. Say, I guess we're all set for a picnic. Now we'll just see if we can gobble up this next question here. <laughs> Here's a history question from Ferner Nunn of Cedar Falls, Iowa. In a speech Abraham Lincoln made when he accepted the Republican nomination for senator, he accused certain members of the party in office of a conspiracy in breaking down the Missouri Compromise by such acts as the Nebraska Bill and the Dred Scott decision. He said, quote, we find it impossible not to believe that Stephen and Franklin and Roger and James all understood one another from the beginning, unquote. Now, the question is, children, who were Stephen, Franklin, Roger, and James? Can you identify two of these four men? Now, wait a minute. While I was reading, all hands went up there. Whose hand was up first? First hand gets first chance. Judge, uh, judges, uh, Richard, all right. With Stephen Douglas, Franklin Pierce, and what were the other two? Uh, Roger and James. James Buchanan. James Buchanan. Roger. I don't know. Can you clear that one up, Joel? Uh, he was uh, Taney, I believe. He was the Chief Justice. Taney Roger Taney, like... Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, who gave the Dred Scott decision. Right. Now that spring is here, kids, baseball is back in the sports headlines again. Mr. C.A. Patey of Illion, New York, notes that five major league teams will have different managers this year than they had last year. She wants you to name three of these new managers. Lonnie. Joe Fuel, Washington Senator. Yeah. Billy he, Meyer, Pittsburgh Who did he replace, Meyer. by the way? Uh, he replaced them. Um, Ozzie Bluegy. And then Blue there's G, Billy yes, Meyer. I, I want to get that. Uh -huh. Billy and, Meyer managing the Pittsburgh Pirates who replaced Billy Harma. Yes, that's and true. And then Joe McCarthy of the Boston Red Sox who replaced... Uh, Oh, uh, Joe Cronin. Joe Cronin. And there's Zach Taylor of the St. Louis Browns. He replaced replaced the... Muddy Rule. Muddy Rule. And the other one is, uh, uh, oh no, Johnny Noon was for the last Richard? Year. Leo DeRocher was the new manager. Uh, who did he replace? Joe? Bert Schutten. Oh, shut Bert Bert Schutten, who acted as manager last year. Huh? Fine. All right, children. Now then, uh, here's another interesting question. Oh, before you ask it, Joe, uh, here's one for our listeners. I'm wondering how many of you folks couldn't take your place on the Easter parade today because of a cold. Well, even though spring is here, the cold-catching season is still with us. And friends, if you're caught with a cold, here's the thing to do. Start right in on Alka-Seltzer's ABC Cold Comfort Treatment. That's right, and here's the way it goes. A stands for Alka-Seltzer. Yes, yeah, start taking Alka-Seltzer at once to help relieve that ache in every bone, feverish feeling of a cold. B means B-Y. Beware of drafts. Dress and eat sensibly, and be sure to get more rest than usual. And C stands for comfort. Yes, indeed, the comfort an Alka-Seltzer gargle can give a sore, raspy throat. Now, there it is, friends. Alka-Seltzer's easy-to-follow ABC cold comfort treatment. And we know you'll welcome the ease it can bring to much of your cold distress. If you're suffering from a cold, you'll want to try it right now. So visit your drugstore for either the 30 or 60 cent size package of Alka-Seltzer and begin the ABC cold comfort treatment immediately. Alka-Seltzer can be worth its weight in gold when you're suffering from a cold. 
All right, children, let's get along with more questions. Florence Dode of North Franklin, Connecticut, wonders if you know her favorite Easter hymn. Howard Peterson will play parts of three hymns, and you children are not only to identify them, but prove you know the words by singing the opening line or two. All right, here's the first one. Patrick? Well, that's uh, the palm. The palm. The right. glory palm. And that's uh, now dawn so bright and happy Easter morn. We for the springtime of the soul's awakening. Jesus has come to wipe our tears away. He now the song to welcome him prepare. Easter is here, it is Easter now. Easter the springtime of the soul's awakening. Easter is Easter now. God's children lift up their voices and have to greet him. That's fine, Pat, that's fine. <laughs> That's all right. Now let's see if we can get the next one. Lonnie? Oh, isn't that the old rugged cross? No, no. I'm sorry, Lonnie. Patrick. Well, that's the Lord. I am not worthy. That's right. That's Just the opening me. line, Patty. Okay. All right. <laughs> Uh, there, there are only four lines in the first Well, all right. Go right ahead. <laughs> oh, Lord, I am not worthy that thou should come to me, but speak thy words of comfort. My spirit shall heal thee. All right. Thank you, Patrick. And uh, now let's see if we can get this third one. Lonnie? That's beneath the cross of Jesus. That's right, Lonnie. Um, beneath the cross of Jesus, I fain would take my stand. The shadow of a mighty rock within a weary land. A home within a wilderness. Arrest upon the way from the burning of the noontide heat and the burden of the day. All right, thank you, Lonnie. You know, Patty, well, I didn't uh, mean any reflection on your singing a while ago when I asked you just the opening line. We're just running a little short on time here, and I don't want to forget about that poem assignment I gave you kids. And uh, you remember, you were to write a poem on your mother's Easter bonnet. Uh, how are you fixed? Are you all finished? Who wants to start off? Richard? I have tried to write about my mother's bonnet, so I'll try to do so in a sonnet. She has it covered with great big roses, but when caught in the rain, she yells, Holy Moses! <laughs> ah, ah, ah. Oh, that was a dandy. <laughs> David! My mother's Easter bonnet. My mother's Easter bonnet doesn't look like a hat. I often wonder if it is that. It's filled with fruit, vegetables, and such, but twice is so high, no wonder it costs so much. <laughs> <laughs> Joel? Uh, my, my mother's Easter bonnet. I am now writing a poem on it. It's circular and it's above par. And there's a hole in the crown and you should see her wear it around town. <laughs> <laughs> well, you certainly got that to rhyme all right, Joel. And uh, Patrick? Well, uh, I, didn't, I, didn't, I couldn't think of anything right offhand. But uh, I have I have a little something that doesn't describe it, but it's it's a poem. Oh, it's a poem. Yeah. Well, all right, let's have it. Uh, at rhyming, I am no star. There are others who are better by far. So I hope you'll excuse me if I have to refuse thee. My thoughts are as sticky as tar. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Pat, we'll do just that. And uh, here's Lonnie. Well, I guess this isn't too flattering, but... Uh... Well, it isn't a musical uh, poem, is it? No. Too flat. Oh, I see. Right. My ahead. mother's Easter bonnet is nothing less than a freak. But just the same, she seems to want to wear it every week. I guess I'll have to stand it, for mother won't disband it. But I wish that another hat she would seek. <laughs> All 
right. Well, those were, were all good, kids. That, that was a lot of fun. That's very difficult to do is to write a little poem while you're answering other questions, too. A lot of us don't uh, uh, think of that part of it. Now, here we go with uh, a question from Joan Callan of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And uh, she calls this question the books in color game. You will have to give book titles to answer this question and try and get two out of three. First, what color was Stevenson's arrow? Joe? The black arrow. That's right, the black arrow. What color was Hawthorne's letter? Lonnie? Scarlet. Scarlet letter. The Scarlet letter by Hawthorne, uh uh-huh. And what color was Hudson's mansion? Hudson's Mansions. Richard? Green Mansions. Green Mansions, that's right. It's a book by Hudson, Uh uh-huh. And uh, now then you'll have to go way back in American history to answer this question from Mrs. J. Kennedy of Brooklyn, New York. What international marriage reversed the usual order of such affairs, the Native American girl having the title and the Englishman being the commoner? Richard? Isn't that the marriage between the Duchess of Windsor, with the Duchess of Windsor? Oh, no, no, no. We said the Native American girl having the title and the Englishman being the commoner. David? It was Pocahontas and John Rolfe. That, uh, he, was, he was a commoner and she was an Indian princess. That's right. Yes, Pocahontas was the American Indian princess. Now, uh... That was a tough question. I, I don't know whether you kids would get that or not. So, since we have all boys in our quiz kids class today, Mrs. Elsie Weaver of Des Moines, Iowa, thinks it's a good time to have some fun with this question. Can you make up some sentences in which a girl's name is used as a noun or a verb? For instance, you might say, I hung my coat on a peg using the girl's name, Peg. See, that's the idea. Now, what others can you think of, uh, Richard? May I have a piece of candy? May I have a piece of candy? That's a dandy... Lonnie? Well, um, you may have a piece of candy and an apple. And an, I get it, don't tell me. Huh? I'm going to marry that girl. I am going to marry that girl. And so... Well, uh, pardon me, but uh, isn't May a, a verb? Well, May is the name of a girl I know because uh, that, that was my mother's name, May. Uh-huh. And David? Uh, uh, could you g- give me some candy? Candy's a nickname for a girl. Candy nickname. Well, I guess their time is all up. There's the old school bell. And another question session is over. It's time for the judges to get busy on the scores so we can find out who comes back to school next week. Uh, they'll have your report cards ready in just a minute, children. And while we're waiting, here's an important message. Mother, are you having trouble getting your children and your family to take their vitamins every day? Try giving them one-a-day brand multiple vitamin capsules. Each one-a-day brand multiple capsule contains all the vitamins for which the amount needed for grown-ups and children has been established. What's more, one capsule every day is all they take. And one-a-day brand multiple vitamin capsules are low in cost. A full month supply for only $2. Ask your druggist for one-a-day brand vitamins. Good for growing children and adults. Remember, for vitamins the easy way, for vitamins the thrifty way, the brand you want is one a day. And now, quiz kids, before I give you the judge's report on today's classroom session, I want to remind our listeners that the Campfire Girls celebrate their 38th anniversary this month. This great organization deserves the support of us all. And now then, here are the scores. Remember, kids, whether you win or lose this afternoon, you all receive a $100 savings bond from the makers of Alka-Seltzer to help you with your future education. And now listen, here are your report cards. The judges say that our entire class missed one question this afternoon. Lonnie is first, Pat second, Joel and Richard tied for third. That means you four will be back in school next Sunday, along with a brand new quiz kid, a contest winner, representing the Boys Clubs of America, James Cook, age 12. All you listeners plan to be with us, too, won't you? Remember, class will be called to order next Sunday afternoon, same time, same station. Until then, this is Joe Kelly dismissing the quiz kids. Goodbye, kids. Goodbye, Bye, Bye. Bye. Listen to the Quiz Kids every week and listen to Alka-Seltzer's Views of the World every Monday through Friday over most of these NBC stations. This is Bob Murphy speaking. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. Mm -hmm.